Hello and welcome to Book Break for September. Uh, for Greece Public Library, I'm Kirstra. I'm one of our librarians and I moderate our Pints and Prose book discussion group. I'm joined as always by my fellow book club leader, Claire. Hi, I am Claire and I moderate As the Page Turns and also the historical group on Facebook. Yes, and today based on a um, viewer comment from our last book break, um, we're going to be doing kind of a book club special. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the different book clubs that we have here at Greece Public Library, how you can join, all of that stuff. And then we both have um, a few selections from our various book clubs that we're going to talk about to you. And okay. <laughs> we could have gone on so many more books mm. to talk about because uh, yeah. book clubs are awesome. Absolutely. Um, so I'll just jump in. Um, so my book club that I moderate is Pints and Prose. Um, it's actually a partnership with the Blue Barn Cidery um, here in North Greece. So we meet at the Cidery, which is fun for me and everyone else, I think. So it's kind of a slightly different vibe. Um, it's a very informal book group. Um, but we have, you know, a different selection each month. Um, we pick about six months at a time. So our selections are made through the end of this year and we're getting ready to pick our first six books for next year. Um, we meet on the second Wednesday of the month, like I said, at Blue Barn Cidery. Um, and we read all kinds of stuff. Um, there's usually at least one nonfiction um, for every six months period, um, but then we do everything from literary fiction, historical fiction, to um, thrillers and mysteries. That group tends to like a good thriller. <laughs> Who doesn't, you know? True, true. So. Um, yeah, so that's Pints and Prose. Okay, and um, like Pints and Prose, mine, you can register right on our calendar, on our website. Yes. If you go to uh, website calendars, you can read more about our picks on, under the readers tab. It'll tell you more about what we're reading. I'll start a little bit with my um, historical group because we are took a hiatus for the summer. We're getting ready to get back. Um, we're reading The Long Flight Home by Alan Ladd. And I just started reading it. And I really am enjoying it so far. It's available on Hoopla. I try to pick books that are available on Hoopla for the virtual club. Um, and we just, the way we discuss is right in our Facebook group. So I will post comments on that evening. It's usually the first Tuesday of each month mm -hmm. and at seven o'clock and I just post and then you can write your comments and also comment on what other people said. It's really a lot of fun. And if you're a little bit shyer and like historical fiction, this would be a great group for you and we are accept new members at any time you just go on the mm -hmm. Facebook page and ask to join. Um, my other one is as the page turns and we meet the third Tuesday of each month. We kind of do a similar thing, but we vote for our books pretty much for the year. Mm -hmm. And I am a loon, I will admit that. I have like an enormous spreadsheet of books that I watch all year. And then I tabulate how many are in the system and then I separate them by genre. And then I come up with a PowerPoint presentation and then I give them a ballot. And this year I actually um, had sent that out early, but you can still do it if you still wanna join. And so this September, the last 15 minutes of the meeting, I'll do my little presentation and then we will vote. But like Kirstra, I try to do, um, I usually have at least one classic, nonfiction, literary fiction, contemporary issues, uh, historical. This year, I'm really throwing everybody off. I'm throwing some fantasy choices and I'm throwing some YA choices in there. So <laughs> I like to mix it up. And my motto is, it's not always gonna be a book that you love, mm -hmm. but I want something that we can talk about. Like yeah, we really if, talk about the books. So yeah, and I don't know if your experience has been the same, Claire, but I have actually found that some of our best discussions at Pints and Prose have been books that not everyone liked. Yeah. Where there was kind of differing opinions about right. the book. Yeah. 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 It's not much fun to just sit there and go, oh yeah, I loved it. Loved it was it. great. Yeah. It was great. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, we also have another 
Facebook so virtual book club um, that is the mystery book club. So they meet on Wednesdays. Um, they were also on hiatus. They're coming back the third Wednesday in September at seven. Um, but it's just like Claire's historical group on Facebook where you request to join the group. Um, and then the moderator, um, who is another one of our librarians, will post questions during the hour of the discussion and you can comment or post or just lurk and read, you know, however you <laughs> want to participate. Right. Um, so yeah, so we have lots of options for lots of different kinds of readers. Um, and the two in-person groups do require registration, at least at this time, as Claire said, but you can do that right on our website. Um, and you can find our selections for the rest of the year on the website as well. So yeah, join us. We have lots of fun at we all do. the book clubs. We do. It's a great sure. group, mm -hmm. both of them, because yes. occasionally I pop into Kirsten's too. I know, and I have uh, popped into yours as well. Yeah. So yeah, good times. Um, so let's talk about some of our um, notable books from book club. All right. Um, do you want to start? Yeah, the first one I'm going to talk about is actually from, it was the first book we did in the Historical Book Club, yeah. and it was right as the pandemic was getting rolling, um, and it's called The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek by Kim Michelle Richardson. Um, everyone really loved this book, and, uh, and it's a popular book club book, you know, for in-person discussions as well. If you like historical fiction, um, Kim Michelle Richardson is from Kentucky. I actually corresponded with her. She did an author visit here at the library later in the year, virtually. Um, it is about, it's two things that were historically based, the pack horse librarians of Kentucky mm -hmm. and also the blue skinned people of Kentucky, mm -hmm. both of which are real things. And she researched quite thoroughly and wanted to portray in a real, realistic way because she lives there and she wanted to honor, honor the truth. Um, her main character is Cussie Mary, who is both a pack horse librarian and a blue. Um, so the novel follows her as she struggles through the restraints placed on her, A, as a woman, mm -hmm. and B, the discrimination she faced as being a blue person, um, which was considered colored in those days and times. Hmm. So um, the novel, I, I would consider it literary in style, but it very unapologetically describes also the poverty in that region and the pride of the residents of Appalachia. Um, it was really, really good. I, I just liked all the different ways she brought up different characters because as the Pack Horse Librarian has her regular customers on the route, you get to know mm -hmm. those people as well. Um, so yeah, and if you really liked the story and like the characters, I have good news for you people. <laughs> I will unapologetically plug the book woman's daughter will be coming out in May. She literally just announced this on her Facebook page yesterday. So I am pretty darn excited about that. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I know that author visit was really well attended. Yeah, so. she was wonderful. Yeah, she sent awesome. out book plates with little mules because the mule is oh. a character in the book too. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Nice. Um, well, my first one is um, a book that was recommended for our book club. Um, and I didn't really know much about it going into it, but ended up liking it quite a bit and we had a good discussion on it. And that one is Before the Fall by Noah Hawley. Um, so this book is about, um, so there's 11 people on a plane, uh, leaving Martha's Vineyard. It's a private, like little charter jet flying back to New York. So it's like the flight crew, um, some very well-to-do, um, passengers and one, uh, sort of down on his luck painter who hitches a ride at the last minute. Um, and 10 minutes after the plane takes off, it crashes into the ocean. There are only two survivors. So the painter, whose name is Scott, and um, the son of like the couple who chartered the plane, um, who the father is like a media mogul 
um, like extraordinarily wealthy media mogul person. So we have um, the main sort of plot line of the book is what happens to Scott and the boy after the plane crashes. Um, and then we have flashbacks for each of the passengers on the plane and the crew getting their backstory. And with each piece of backstory, you start to put together what actually happened on the plane and why it went down. Um, so there's a little bit of suspense. You know that the plane goes down, but you don't know why. Like you don't know if it was an accident or sabotage or whatever. Um, but you start to be able to like put those pieces together as the story unfolds. Um, so it was um, a fun page turny read um, with some interesting characters. And we had just a great time talking about all of the different characters and their relationships and their backstories and you know what we thought had happened at this point and when we put together that that had actually happened. Uh, so we had um, a really fun discussion on that one too. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the things I really like about being in a book club is that sometimes you are kind of forced to read books that are out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the ones that was most like that for me that really shocked me as how much it was a, a great discussion and that I really liked it was The Enchanted by Renee Denfeld. Um, this was a book that was picked for If All of Rochester Reads and we mm -hmm. had the author visit here at the library at that time. Um, and it was just amazing to me that A, it's a debut novel. Um, it was so lyrical and just the way she took such a traumatic fraught subject mm -hmm. of being in a prison on death row and kind of made it like magical and you know you you learn about things but you it wasn't graphic uh you know i don't know how to explain it but yeah um so you're seeing death row through the eyes of this death row in, inmate who finds escapes in his books um and reimagining life around him and then there's also a death row investigator that is trying to help him and originally that is what renee denfeld did as a career um, and a fallen priest. So you have the lady and the priest who um, are trying to figure out what happened with this killer. So it's just, you know, you find out about other characters in the book, you know, what happens. There's like a story of the white haired boy, which just about tore me apart. Um, so even though it was disturbing, in a lot of ways, you know, realizing what goes on in a, print, a prison, you learn so many things. And um, just hearing her talk was the icing mm -hmm. on the cake because she's such a hopeful person, even though she's been through many horrible things in her own life. So, and, and that's why you felt it was authentic mm -hmm. just because of her, her own, you know, childhood and what she went through and what she does as, as a job. So, yeah, that was uh, an eye opener for me. Yeah, I loved that book and I was surprised to love it. Um, it's just beautiful, the writing. It is. It is. It's such dark subject matter, but it's just a beautiful book. Yeah. It blew me away. Yeah. yeah. She really had a gift for words and that one mm -hmm. was just off the yeah. charts. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, I actually also have a Rochester Reads book um, that we read for Pints and Prose. This was the first time that we read the Rochester Reads book as a book group, um, and that is American War by Omar el -Akkad. Um And I was surprised by how much I liked this book as well. Um, it was pretty divisive in the group, like people had a lot of strong opinions both ways on this one. Um, but it, so the the plot is um, following Sarah, uh, Sarat. Um, she is six years old at the beginning of the book when the new American Civil War breaks out, the second American Civil War breaks out in 2074. So we're set slightly in the future. Um, she lives in Louisiana. Um, she ends up being displaced by the war and ending up in a refugee camp. 
um, elsewhere in the United States. And one of the things that we learned when the author actually came and spoke at the library for Rochester Reads is that almost all of the descriptions of um, the camp itself and some of the more, um, some of the uglier episodes within the camp were directly based on his experience visiting refugee camps as a journalist. Yeah. Um, so that was very sobering to learn that. Um, but the book follows Surat as she basically becomes radicalized within the refugee camp. Um, and you see her, her journey from like this little girl to essentially a terrorist, a uh, domestic terrorist and what happens after. Um, so again, not, uh, not a light book, not a happy no, no, at all, um, but a lot of food for thought in it. Mm -hmm. um, and the author visit was, again, super duper interesting. Yeah. yeah. Did right. your group read this one as well, Claire? We did. We did. And I have to say it was very similar, uh, mm -hmm. the reaction to it. Mm -hmm. And I could have chosen that one, too. Yeah, you know, not a book you would have ever picked up on your own, but oh. you know, definitely a lot of things to discuss. Mm -hmm. And amazingly, you know, with the weather we've been having, because there was a huge like, remember the flooding and the water yeah. issue. You know, it's yeah. not that far fetched. No. You know, sadly. So, all right. So another book. I, I, I could have done so many other books, but I didn't want to do too many historical fiction. So I was going to talk because I had two more of those. Um, I was going to talk about Commonwealth hmm. by Ann Patchett, um, because sometimes and this was a perfect one in, in, in lieu of more of a plot. Some of the books we read are more like character studies, mm -hmm. like you said. Um, and this one, I just really enjoyed that and the characters came alive for me. I think if you partly grew up during the time period of the 60s, um, she really captured the moments of your life, especially like children that were largely unsupervised running around <laughs> in the woods building forts and something like myself. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it and just also how one event can start to fracture a whole family. And, and in Commonwealth, it is based on a christening where a wife actually has like a heated moment and kisses one of a, actually someone that I don't really believe he was involved or invited to the party, uh, might've been a coworker. I can't remember now, but just this kiss and then this illicit relationship that begins and then the two families fracturing and what happens along mm. the way. Um, it, it just really was mind blowing to me. You know, I just, you know, usually when you can't stop reading a book, it's because, you know, the action or it's a thriller mm -hmm. and you just have to find out what's going on. But this one, I just became so engrossed in the characters. And um, I also, the Dutch house was like that for me as mm -hmm. well. Um, yeah. You know, so I really love her work for, you know, being able to talk about people and, and how we can relate to those people or what they're mm -hmm. going through. And um, oftentimes in a book discussion, you know, you're surprised at what people will relate to or, yeah. or talk about, so. Absolutely. Yeah. So that was a good one. Nice. Um, my last one is um, a nonfiction, but it, it was one of the like best and liveliest discussions that we've had um, and that, was about The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. Um, this book has been out for quite some time. It's not a new book by any means, uh, 2010. So it's uh, 10 years old at this point. Um, but it, so Henrietta Lacks of the title um, was a poor black tobacco farmer um, in the 1950s. She had cancer in, the, in 1951, she was being treated at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore for cervical cancer. Um, and as part of her, or during her treatment, um, one of the doctors removed about a dime-sized sample of one of the tumors on her cervix. 
Um, and those cells that he removed um, were unlike any other cells that doctors had ever tried to grow in a lab. So up until that point, um, not to get too deep in the weeds, um, cultured cells always died. So like you could remove cells from, you know, whatever, any person, animal, and try to keep growing them, but eventually they would die. Um, but the cells that they removed from Henrietta Lacks just kept going. Um, so that's the immortal part of the immortal life of Henrietta Lacks. And those cells have gone on to um, help cure other kinds of cancer. And um, they developed the polio vaccine. Um, they worked on cloning and gene mapping with these cells. And they are cultured and grown and sold um, to various medical research labs by various medical research labs all over the world. Um, and they are still being used today in scientific research 60 years later, which is mind blowing. Um, so the book has kind of two tracks. So it follows Henrietta's life um, and her passing. And then we also have her family, um, her descendants, her children and grandchildren who are growing up in um, the mid-Atlantic area, still very close to being in poverty. They can't even afford medical insurance. Um, and they had no idea that their mother's grandmother's cells were being used literally all over the world for this scientific research. So there's a lot of science writing that the author manages to keep um, pretty basic, I think, so that it's easy to follow, even though she's talking about kind of these complex ideas. Um, there's a lot of stuff in there about like medical consent. Um, ethics. And ethics, absolutely. And all of these things. Um, so there's a, a lot there to unpack. And people bring lots of different perspectives to it um, in my experience. So it was um, a really, really great discussion and people had some really interesting insights into it um, based on their own sort of experience with medical establishment. Mm -hmm. So that was, um, that was a really good discussion for our yeah. group. Awesome. Yeah. So did you have any others, Claire? I was just gonna say if you wanted- <laughs> Honorable mention. <laughs> yeah, an honorable mention. Uh, the Other Einstein by Marie Benedict and really anything by Marie Benedict. She is a former attorney that writes historical mm -hmm. fiction based on real people. And what I like about hers is sometimes people throw in really implausible plot lines or non-existent <laughs> romances mm -hmm. and, and that, drives me crazy. Um, but hers, it usually makes me research the real people mm. myself afterwards for the discussion. And I think that's, you know, I think that's a great part of the discussion is when you actually yeah. learn something new. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so those were some of our notable books that we've discussed in our GPL book clubs. Um, I know a lot of you folks who watch and listen at home um, also participate in some of these book clubs. So let us know if there's a book um, that you discussed with us that really stood out for you. Um, I would be very interested to hear that perspective from um, our members as well. Yeah, or if you, I know some of our members are in many book clubs mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you've read another title in a, another book club you belong to and thought that was worthwhile let us know that one too absolutely because Kirsten and i love having a massive pile of books to read <laughs> we do it it's it's never going away it's the no no tbr to infinity <laughs> yeah so um thank you all so much for joining us um we will be back in a couple of weeks and until then, um, please do think about joining one of our book discussions. You can always try it out just to see if you like it. 
um, there's never any pressure to continue. You don't have to commit to a whole year of book right. discussions to show up. You can just come for one and see what you think. Um, but we're always looking for new folks and we hope we'll see you around. Take care, Thanks, everyone. <laughs>